As we look to 2021, the home is more than ever a place where we need to restore, revitalize, and rejuvenate. And color can help set the mood. Earlier, Sharon revealed a G and Teal as the Benjamin Moore color of the year. It's part of a collection, and now she's going to show us the other colors and how to use them all together. Hey, Sharon. So, you know what, we started talking about our 2021 palette at the end of 2019, which is what we do, and even then, all of our conversations really centered around the idea that all of the colors and all of the materials and items that surround us are going to have to be about comfort. So, the entire team, we all gravitated independently towards handmade tactile items and a real sort of warm, organic-inspired color palette. So, that's really where we, where we netted out. So we have this beautiful range of 12 colors that have this sort of sun-baked quality to them. And again, that, that warmth that I think really resonates for us now and certainly going into 2021. Well, I like when you say things like sun-baked because there will be no baking on a beach anytime soon. So if you can just <laughs> paint your walls that sun-baked look, uh, that's a really good feel. And it's such a nice rain, Sharon. Isn't that so true, right? Like <laughs> sun baked. So whether it's like the, the pale, the mid-tones, or those sort of deep full-bodied colors, they kind of all have that quality. So you do want to surround yourself with them. Now, for some people, being, you know, the idea of comfort is really minimalist, really pale, gentle colors. In fact, Trace, your studio bookshelf area is painted one of the pale colors from the palette, gray cashmere. Very nice, you know, and I, it's beautiful. Uh, I love it with the white shelves, very calming. Yeah, it is very calming, and I think that's, I actually use that same color here in my set because it really sets the tone that, that I wanted for this look. So again, I've sort of picked some really beautiful, um, intentionally minimalist-inspired furniture, and I have to thank Castle Life for all of the beautiful furniture in this set. Um, they've let me pick everything, and everything has a bit of a minimalist feel to it, but a bit more of a softer approach. So you'll notice that everything kind of has a rounded, a rounded edge, even the book bookshelf and the actual design of the bookshelf has this sort of rounded Scandinavian feel. So the textures, um, the, the, um, the sort of tactility of everything is really, really important, especially when you're using these pale colors. So you can have that, that minimalist approach, but kind of soften it with natural materials, lots of texture. And I think we're really embracing the idea of imperfection, which is wonderful when we're not necessarily redecorating all the time. You want to kind of bring in those natural um, pieces. And I think as far as the color palette, when you are going for a minimalist look, um, you know, we don't always style like we're doing a TV show every day. <laughs> At least I don't. <laughs> But if you can try and keep the color palette sort of all in, in that sort of similar, and you can see that I've sort of been inspired by some of the other colors from our palette and those soft mid-tone colors, just even for the accessories, the rugs, you know, all of those sort of clay natural pieces. And then it really helps to keep it sort of feel very calm. So it's also how you put things together and, and what the overall color palette is that you use. I love that Scandi inspired blonde wood and I love what you've done with the first set but now you've got a completely different look in another set. Show us that. All right, so for some people, pale, minimal is their comfort. For others, it's deep, rich hues, a real sort of luxury, dramatic effect that can still be tranquil. So I really wanted to show um, how that those darker colors can work from the palette. So I've used Silhouette on the back wall, which is this beautiful brownie gray. So it's not, it's not too harsh, really, really nice backdrop. And then we're really bringing in all of those hues. So again, I was inspired by a lot of the darker tones in the palette and some of the mint toads to bring that into the accessory so that they pop without being too much. So there's this idea sometimes with a dark space, it's like a little niche or a, um, a space in your home where you go and maybe get your greatest ideas or you go and read a book. So I thought we could kind of bring in a mixture of more past and present decor items. So I've got some really beautiful vintage prints for the gallery wall mixed in with a you know traditional landscape painting and then just sort of a, a canvas print um, so you get the mix of modern and contemporary and then also those sort of vintage pieces so with the artwork it's so important and with a dark backdrop even in this case the cushion my beautiful Frida even it, even that pop so it's a really nice element to bring in those dark cozy hues for me I would love to just crawl into this space
Me too. That's actually, it's the total opposite of the first set, but I, that is my jam right there. I would be there all year long, reading my books, coming up with great ideas. Um, Sharon, I love the space. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Trace. And I think that there's really something for everyone. And I think the idea of comfort is so different. You know, the idea of color, color is so subjective. So for everybody, comfort's gonna be a different color. And what I love about our palette this year is there's just a nice range of, of lights to darks and midtones that I think everybody can use as inspiration to find their own comfort zone. Again, whether it's light, midtone, or dark. Listen, it's the first year we've had to do the presentation apart from each other, but I think it's been really beautiful to see the way you work the colors in your space and we work the colors here in the studio. So it's kind of nice. We got more than one or two ways to do it um, and found a great way to do it remotely. Thank you, Sharon.